Hey guys, welcome back um, to the diagram editing tool video series again, building this with React. So in the last episode, we left off with, or we finished with, what are we going, why we're going with Comma.js, and it's because mainly that it has React support, and we're going to be building our application in React. So the main idea of Canva is to just imagine it as Photoshop. It has a stage which means like a thing a place for everything where everything's going on and uh, multiple layers and each layer overlaps the other one depending on the rendering order and stuff and so and you can add shapes you can mess um the stage and layers really map out to be an html canva and so canva you, you know of course there's like shapes in it the the original html rectangles or um, circles you can just imagine are rectangles and shapes and circles in in the Canva language maps out to those in the native HTML Canva. Yeah, and so yeah, so we have stages, we have layers. Layers will probably consist of the objects. Or the shapes and you probably only want one stage per application um, or per diagramming tool of course and multiple layers maybe for example one for the toolbar and one for the actual ground displaying all of the shapes which we'll get into next video i suppose about the object design um so let me talk about the those and the notable methods because we'll be using these methods quite often for stage you have find one you in the parameter for the find one method you type in the name of the shape which you can give it to it uh while in declaration writing declaratively and yeah it returns you the shape which you can do a lot of things with for example set attribute which will change the attributes of the shape yeah, um, something to watch out with set attribute though. It doesn't render, um, doing it with React does not automatically render it. So you either want to use the shape.draw method, stage.draw if you want to just do shape.draw to draw it again. Um, yeah, it doesn't automatically be rendered because in the state it never updated and therefore in the actual thing we're displaying, the React is not called to update the set attribute is only going on in like the in the Canva JS language which is not in our react state unless we want it to be which we'll get into next video too um so sorry if that was a little bit confusing i hope i didn't make it that confusing uh, of course we want to use the mouse position a lot for example i think in the demo that i showed you guys last time i had a demo of the arrow dragging and that cannot be done without the get absolute position. Now you could do the native uh, way that JavaScript um, developers do it. You know, you can pass an event to pass an event and then get the mouse X or is it like page X from it? Um, but I just find get absolute position easier. You know, just a comma thing. So let's just do the comma language. And for all of these objects, you write them declaratively like this. So rectangle, you write this, write it like this, and of course you put in a few attributes like x equals to fifty, y equals to ten, width equals to ten, so on and so forth. Um, but for all of them, you can almost implement these uh, functions on wheel, drag events, ma all mouse over that is built in. So for the drag events, there's on drag, uh, actually on drag move, on drag start, on drag end, and that's it. There is no on drag enter, and you have to maybe manually um, implement that, or on drag leave, whatever. And the on mouse over cam um, is definitely going to be used in the stage object, because on mouse over of the stage, we are going to get the absolute position of the mouse in order to draw the arrow. So that little example right there, that if you can relate back to a demo, um, is going to require the shape the this thing the drag events well actually the uh, mouse over events and the get absolute position and we'll be using that a lot so with that being said let's just do a real quick demo and a really friendly application 
so we know what we're messing with that was my actual code um i have already created a react app because i made this earlier to make sure this it does work so let's um so create react app if you still haven't already and if you don't know how to do that you just press if you just type npx create react app and then put in the name of your app but now let me go back to and then what is my application called live search npm run star i believe yeah so and let me read this real quick so i know i don't forget what i'm doing and to show you guys okay import stage layer circle from react Conva if you still haven't already and if you still haven't even installed react Conva, do npm install react Conva, and i believe that works so what we'll be building here is something that will be used actually towards our toolbar what you can do with this is you drag the circle and then it seems like it, uh, it jumps back to the original spot so in the actual toolbar example we're going to drag it and then when we drop it uh, the circle is going to stay there and yeah and that's kind of like the drag and drop feature right the toolbar's shape of course does not move but you know it seems like we dragged over there and it just stayed static but to so but let's build so we are not building the the dragon part and it like stopping there first we're just drawing like a snapback motion so how do we do that first of all oh i'm in a completely different language here first of all please recall um the stage and object thing i mean and layer thing and of course we want this kind of layout right the stage and then the layer this should be really uh, intuitive and of course we'll draw the shapes in the layers um a few things that you just have to remember for the stage you just want to do this just kind of have to um and a high equals to window dot inner heights or whatever height you want it to be but make sure you set this shoot um okay and then let's just draw something simple let's just draw a circle right now Let's place it at the x coordinate of 50. My thing is a little bit laggy. And then let's place it at the y coordinate of maybe 500. And let's give it a radius of uh, 25. And as you can see, things pretty declarative, right? You just write it out. You just tell it what, what x coordinate to have, what y coordinate to have, what radius to have. Beautify JS it, and then. Um, save so hopefully we get something now we don't because i forgot the fill property so i'm going to say that to fill the green and is there anything i'm missing believe not okay so we got a circle to create this effect what we're actually doing um is having two circles at the exact same spot the first circle i mean uh the circle on top is actually draggable and the moment that we drop the draggable circle we are going to let it return to the original space and later on in the toolbar what we're going to implement is that when we when we drop it not only it goes back to the original place it also tells our program to create a new object at the exact same place uh that we set the um draggable circle to be dropped at so that it looked like it just got dropped um and of course we need this because we need to have two circles so that when we drag the second circle the first one looks like it is still in place explanation for why we're doing this thing so draggable that's all we got to do to make a draggable right and of course now it's not returning to the original position so we got to use remember um you can implement the drag events on these or the drag events is detected automatically and we just got to implement what it does so on drag end use an anonymous function um let's do let's do let's just let's just make sure that it logs make sure it logs um ended open up f12 ended okay 
So now what we got to do, so how do we tackle this problem? How do we select the object and then return it to the original place? Let's look through our PowerPoints to see if that, if we can do something with that. Actually, I forgot to share one thing in the PowerPoint that I just remembered and I should probably talk about it. It seems like if we use the stage just find one method, we can return a shape and then we can maybe set attributes. Okay, so that seems to be it really. Okay, so let's do stage dot find one, but we definitely don't know what the stage is. And we definitely don't have a name for the circle. So we're going to give this a name because we've got to enter the name to find it. Uh, so let's do name equals to draggable circle. And then stage dot find one draggable circle, but we don't know what the stage is. So how do we get reference to the stage? Exactly by doing what I just said, you've got to set a reference for the stage. Let's just call it stage or just to make sure it doesn't rename itself um, with the same name. Let's do big stage, I guess. And the way we can locate that is just do um, const just do everything with var whatever uh, this dot rev stop big stage and then we can just do stage dot find one console dot log stage dot find one jackal bus circle so we should be able to see a comma circle object being logged right now okay it's undefined so what did I mess up this dot ref dot big stage. I found one draggable circle. Hmm. Not sure where I messed up. Did I make a typo somewhere? Okay, I remember. Um, for some reason, uh, when you gotta find the one, you just gotta do period first, I believe. Yeah, I messed this up earlier too. Okay, so now it works. So we can look at our circle ob uh, object. Um, usually when we set attribute, it's really setting things here. And it has all the X's and Y's here. Radius here. And so now we can do... Uh, okay, so... Gotta get rid of the console log thing and do actually... Let the object be... Circle equals to... Stage. And then we gotta do circle.setAttribute. I'm actually let's use another function which is same thing as said attribute to be honest but i just like it it has a name position in it so it makes more sense um let's do x 100 oh what was it original x is 50 y is 500 so again you can do this perfectly with circle dot set attribute um first argument being position or first argument being x and then put in n50 for it and then just do set attribute again and the first property y and then put 500 for the second argument but you know this is a function that is you know it, it says what it does so i like to use this one um and there is position i believe there's scaling that is has a default function to do it of course you can implement your own if you like to read better cleaner stuff uh this should be this okay let's see if it works doesn't work um and when we just put that right there it works let's go back to the powerpoint to look out to look about why seems like we're missing about the draw yeah because react only re-renders if or usually if the state changes but nothing changed really right the circle changed but circle is not in our state so react doesn't give a crap about it kind of have to do circle.draw again or let's just do let's just do this dot stage dot i mean this ref stop big stage dot draw and hopefully this should work yeah so it has a snap back motion and that's it for this video next video will be getting to some of the problems that you will see uh namely when we're creating the tool a diagram tool of course we don't know how many circles there will be you know how many circles that the users will create so we're just going to be doing you know my circles dot map 
each circle and then rendering done. Um, and we gotta have a state that is my, my circle. And to get that state, we um, that state is uh, modified w with the actual toolbar, right? Because when the toolbar drops the shape, it adds it into that state. And then when that state changes, it in turn changes what is to be displayed in the rendering function. But it seems kind of counterintuitive sometimes because it seems like Canva, the stage itself, has all of the things in it. So it doesn't make sense sometimes why we're messing with the state of React so much instead of just messing with the Canva. And perhaps every time that we sense, so that every time the component updated, we can maybe just call stage.toJSON and then store that into the whole thing to a state and then uh, modify that and display it. And that might, that might look like it makes more sense, but in the next video, we'll explain from this about that and then extend from this little thing here. So thank you and see you guys next time.